This presentation examines the notion of correlation. First, let's define that notion. Correlation is a measure of the strength of a relationship between two variables. The correlation coefficient is a number that has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. A correlation of 0 means there is no relationship between the variables. So let's talk about what that term relationship means. Can you predict one number if you know the other? If that's not the case, if there's no way for us to make a reasonable prediction, then we would say there is a zero correlation. A correlation of one is a perfect positive correlation, which means as one variable increases, the other also increases. And in this case, since it is a perfect positive correlation, you can predict and be completely accurate the dependent variable based on the behavior of the independent variable. Similarly, a correlation of negative one is a per perfect negative correlation as one variable increases the other decreases but again we can predict the dependent variable solely by looking at the independent variable and we'll get it exactly right. So here's what a correlation of one looks like. All of the points are on a straight line with a positive slope. It doesn't have to quite be this slope, it could be a, a smaller slope or it could be a larger slope. But all of the points, again, we have the independent variable on the x-axis, we have the dependent variable on the y-axis. This point would be the x is 1 and the y is maybe 1.3. So all of these points lie on a perfect straight line with a positive slope, hence the correlation is positive 1. Correlation of negative 1, all of the points lie on a straight line with negative slope. So if you wanted to predict the y value, all you would do would be to plug the x value into the equation of the line and you would get the exact answer for that y value, hence a perfect negative correlation. Here are some other examples. An r of negative 0.9, notice the general trend going down. It's close to negative 1, the points almost lie on a straight line, hence the correlation coefficient is about negative 0.9. Here the correlation is about negative 0.5. Again, we're using the letter R for the correlation coefficient. The points are tending to be negative, but they're also bunched fairly close to a line, hence that'll give us a negative correlation of about 0.5. Here the correlation is zero. It's a cloud. There really is no way to predict the Y value based on the X value. There is no relationship. There is no trend that we can take advantage of. Here we have another linear relationship. These points almost all lie in a straight line. They're not tightly bunched. Correlation is about 0.5. Here these points lie in a straight line. They are more tightly bunched, and the correlation is 0.9. Again, positive slope, positive slope, positive correlation. And here's a perfect positive correlation, perfect correlation of 1. You could exactly predict the y value by looking at the x value and plugging the x value into the equation of that line to predict the y value. So let's talk about what the correlation coefficient is. R is a statistic, rho is a parameter. So when we're looking at samples, if we want to find the correlation for samples, that correlation will be R. If somehow we have the entire population, which practically is impossible, but if we had the entire population, then rho would be the correlation coefficient. So we want to be able to compute that statistic, the correlation coefficient r is the sum of x minus x bar over s sub x. Notice that is the z scores in the x column multiplied by y minus y bar over s sub y. The z scores in the y column divided by n minus 1. So let's look at an example. We want to find the correlation between scores on the first test and the scores on a final exam in an algebra class. These are not independent samples. These are dependent. It's the same individual measured twice. We want to see if there is a relationship between scores on the first test and scores on the final. We would expect good students would do well on both tests, hence we would expect a positive correlation. So here's the data that we're working with. We have a certain number of students. This is all one class, so this list just continues over on this side. So we have the scores on the first test and the scores on the final exam. Notice a good student here, 92 on the test one, 91 on the final. Similarly, 97 on test one, 96 on the final. Poor student, 60 on the first test, 53 on the final. Although there are some anomalous cases as well, 81 on the first test, 
66 on the final, etc. 65 on the first test, 85 on the final. So there are some anomalous cases, but for the most part, it appears as if high scores on test one seem to indicate high scores on the final exam. So here's the list of data. We have test one in column X. We have final in column Y. We need to get X bar because our formula requires X minus X bar over S sub X. X bar is the average of the numbers in column X. So I'm going to type equals average of all the numbers in the X column. And that'll give me my X bar. And we get 80.8. .8. And for the standard deviation, we will say equals STDEV, all of the numbers in that column. And we'll see what that gives me. That gives me 13. I want to see a few more decimals. So I'll slide that over just a little bit. So we get our X bar is still 80.8, .8, but our S sub X is 12.9936. Let's do the same thing for y bar. For y bar equals average a v e r a g e for all the numbers in y. We get 75.16. And for s y equals s t d e v. Again, all the numbers in y. And we get 12.834 for our standard deviation of the y. Now we want to get x minus x bar divided by s sub x equals parentheses x minus x bar 80.8 .8, divided by s sub x 12.9936. That'll be my x minus x bar over s sub x column. And that gives us the z score for that x. So that's this first person was 1.6 standard deviations below the mean on the first test. And we'll scroll that down. And then we'll do the same thing for y minus y bar over s sub y. So this is going to equal y minus y bar minus 75.16 divided by s sub y. How about 12? 0.834. That sounds good enough for me. And then we will look at that one. So this person this time was negative 1.72 standard deviations below the mean. So recognize this person was below the mean on the first test and below the mean on the second. So when I multiply those together, I will get a positive number. If the numbers are positive, that means their results were similar. Now notice the second person was above the mean on the first test but below the mean on the second. So when we multiply those together, we're going to get a negative number for our product. So let's go ahead and do that. Equals this number, x minus x bar over s sub x times this number. And then we will put all of those together. And we're going to want the sum of those numbers. So what will the sum of those numbers be? So sum equals, put it here, equals the sum of the product. And what do we get? 18.18. So our correlation is the sum of x minus x bar over s sub x times y minus y bar over s sub y, or the sum of the product of z sub x times z sub y, and that was my 18.18. .18. Divided by n minus 1, n is 25. 25 minus 1 is 24. So our correlation coefficient is 18.18 .18 divided by 24, or 0.758, which is a fairly high correlation. So there seems to be a fairly strong association or relationship between scores on the first test and scores on the final exam in an algebra class. And let's check this work by looking at Minitab. I have the data in C1 and C2. C1 is test 1 and C2 is the final. Minitab can do the correlation coefficient immediately for us. The command is core, C-O-R-R, C1, C2. And we'll see what Minitab gives us. 
Manitab gives us a correlation coefficient of 0.758. It also gives us a p-value. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But if the p-value is small, that tells us that there is indeed a significant relationship, a significant association, a significant correlation between test 1 and final. We can also take a look at a graph. So we're going to pull up the scatter plot under the graph menu, scatter plot. And I have several options. So I think I'm going to pull up the scatter plot with the regression line. So I'm going to say OK there. We have to select the y variable first. So the y variable, the dependent variable for the y variable, we're going to select that one. And then for the independent variable, it's going to be test 1. And then we're going to say OK and see what the graph looks like. So there is our regression line. That is the line that tells me the best way to predict the dependent variable, the final exam, from the first test. You'll notice these are fairly tight to each other, and that indeed is indicative of our correlation of 0.758. So one of the things we're going to want to look at is to find the equation of that regression line. You'll notice Minitab is giving it to us. The regression line, the final, is 14.7 points plus about 75% of test 1. It's just a coincidence that we have about 0.75 as the slope of that line as well. That will not typically be the case. And in a later presentation, we will demonstrate how to find the equation of that regression line. And that will conclude this presentation.